Hello, good afternoon to everybody here. Reverend Adikulati, Mr. and Mrs. Cordier, as we wait for address, thank you for coming in. Shall we and begin? Father, we say that we are elated and grateful to you for all that you made available to us as believers in Christ. And because of that, Father, we are here. We enjoy and stand in this grace wherein we stand in you. For it is by grace that we have been saved through faith, which is not of ourselves, but is the gift of God. Father, if there's anything that stands in the way of our continual clear understanding, I bring it down and I allow only the light of the gospel to shine. I thank you for utterance in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Good afternoon once again, officially. And welcome to our daily teaching devotional, Epignosis Online, or what I call Epignosis Day from Full Gospel Church International, the London Bishop, with myself, um, Pastor Fred, Lady Patience, and the leadership of the church. Thank you once again, Mr. and Mrs. Sarkodie, for being here. Thank you also, Reverend Adikulati, as we wait for others to join. So let us just go into the bandwagon and begin to taxi in our teaching for today. So we are still continuing on this thing that we started in January, spiritual growth in Christ, what it is and what it is now. Lesson 149, season number one. As usual, a rapid recap, and then we'll get into the details of today's teaching. So we said that growing spiritually is equal to a clear and accurate understanding of the epistles, which explain the Old Testament and the Gospels. Then we also said that we need to grow in our understanding as part of spiritual growth of our authority in Christ, according to how the foundational apostles emphasize it. If our authority is explained the wrong way from how Jesus taught the apostles, it robs us of our sense of worth, very important. Therefore, there is only one explanation, one pattern and mode of teaching concerning our authority and the gospel called and this is called, this one mood, one way of explaining is called the doctrine or the explanation of Christ in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. So we said that Paul advised his protege, Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Hold fast and follow the pattern of wholesome pattern, pattern, pattern pattern, model, style of explanation of wholesome and sound teaching, which you have heard from me. So they, that means that in Paul's explanation of the gospel, there was a pattern which Timothy observed and heard from him in all the faith and love which are for us, they are meant for us. They are for our advantage. So when you don't follow the pattern of this wholesome and sound explanation, then it makes the person think it is only for some people and not for others. That's why I said that, hold on to that, that pattern of wholesome and sound teaching which you have heard from me in all the faith and love which are for us in Christ Jesus. God and keep, God and keep with the greatest faith, the precious and excellently adapted, excellently adapted. The truth is excellently adapted already. You and I will need to come to grips with how it is already adapted 
initially when you start to read and study it does not appear that it is adapted excellently but it is already adapted excellently which is part of the process that's why i said keep it that way guard it that way so you come to the place of knowing that it's excellently adapted which has been entrusted to you by the help of the holy spirit who makes his home in us we said any teaching that tries to make the challenges we face in terms of our authority or our work in christ seem like it is due to multiple reasons is preaching doctrines of devils because the source of all evils and problems is just one thing what is that one thing the death dna from adam's sin dna so first timothy chapter one and verse one said that paul an apostle of christ jesus by appointment and command of god our savior and of christ jesus same advice he gave to timothy again it appears that one timothy two timothy and and the book of titus were written to warn of this danger of moving away from the pattern or model of how the gospel is explained already and sometimes the the, the temptation the desire is sometimes in our logical human reasoning in our human thinking we think that we cannot stick to that because in the world we live things keep on changing but that is not true that is not true. so he said to timothy my true son in the faith grace okay. spiritual blessing and favor mercy and heart peace be yours from the god and father and christ jesus our lord as i urged you it was an agency it was an it was a very serious matter we, when i was on my way to macedonia timothy stay on where you are at ephesus why in order that you may one warn number two admonish, number three charge certain individuals so that means that this attitude is there among certain individual believers these believers no matter how it is clear that the model or style of explanation is fixed would once in a while try to be naughty to either oppose it or find a way to go around it they are thinking logical they think that just as in life you cannot always be drinking the same soup you cannot be wearing the same clothes you cannot be you cannot be driving the same car you must be changing now so they use that human philosophy and try to transpose it into the word of god thinking that they are the custodians of the word so they think that well if in the world you can, you have to eat variety of food different diets different diets so when it comes to the word of god also you cannot always be hearing the same thing see that is where the deception is because they don't know that the fixed stature of the word of god they don't understand they don't see and understand that it is complete that is why it does not need it does not need to change so he said stay at ephesus and warn people like that admonish people like that charge them not to teach or explain any different doctrine that means there's only one doctrine and we said the word different is a greek word heteros heteros different of a complete order from how it has been laid down by christ so we we said that when that happens what does that happen it fosters huh it, it fosters what we occupy themselves with legends they occupy themselves with fables they occupy themselves with myths all these are man-made based on logic and endless genealogies and look at what happens it fosters useless speculations useless questionings rather than acceptance in faith of god's way of administrating this divine training that is in the truth so that what you 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 lean absolutely on what god has done as complete and 
adequate. So he said that you must turn away from that and from those people. These people, they are ambitious. Ambition is the very other side of lust. The word ambition here is said they are ambitious. They are ambitious. The word ambition comes from the Greek word epitumia. Epitumia. E P I T H U M I A. Epitumia. The negative side of it is called lust. It is a very strong willed, stubborn mind to do things your own way. These kind of people, they don't conform. And we see them when we're growing up in schools. The school will tell you, be, be in school by 8.30, they'll be there at 9. They'll tell you that, no, you have to wear a uniform like this, then they'll wear their own different. See, that is, that is, that is last. It's a strong story, and they've grown up with it. So now when they become born again, you know, they still carry that same thing because they have done things their own way. They have had their own way, and it has got its good part when it is used in the right way. But when it comes to being in a perimeter of a set of code of ethics or way things be done, their strength and that stubbornness will not allow them. So ambition is not from God. Ambition is man-made. It is a man's strong desire to go his own way, regardless of the red flags or regardless of anything. When it is negative, it is called lust, to have a strong desire for things wrongfully. He said, these people who don't understand that the Bible has got its own set model laid already and is complete, they are ambitious. They are strong will. They think that, listen, we cannot be following this thing the same way. So they are ambitious to be doctors or teachers of the law, runner, teachers of the mosaic ritual. But they have no understanding either of the words of the mosaic law and the terms of the mosaic law, the use of, of the subjects about which they make such dogmatic assertions. It's an assertion. They are assertive, strong will, stubborn in their mind. That even though God, who is bigger than all, has said, this is the way it should be, they say, no, we cannot be drinking the same soup. We cannot be drinking the same things. We cannot be listening to the same things. No, at least let us learn a bit of this, a bit of that. That is where it comes from, ambition. That's why the word of God calls Israel stiff-necked, stiff-necked and stubborn. That not knowing that the plan of God in salvation was complete, they were seeking to find their own way. That they make dogmatic assertions. And he went on and on and on. He said that from such people turn away. That's why Paul advised Timothy again in the same 1 Timothy chapter 6 from verse 3 to 5. I'm talking about spiritual growth. Why? All that was then, and does not assent to the sound and wholesome message or teaching. We said the word sound is the Greek word hugaino. It means it is healthy. It might not be popular, but it is healthy. It has no defect. You think it has a defect or it's not enough because you have not read it and studied it and applied yourself to it consistently. You, 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 it is adequate. You can't agree that it's adequate. That is why you are saying that we, Christ was buried, Christ resurrected, Christ ascended, we are superior, we have authority. No, we cannot be teaching like that. Look at the unbelievers. They are successful in the world. Why don't we bring management concepts? Why don't we bring sigma concepts? Why don't we teach the church? how to make money, see that? Because they don't consent 
to the fact that the word of God is adequate, is complete. The reason why they don't see it's complete is that they don't read it enough. That's why it this allows them to see that. See that? In this work, they don't see, they don't consent to that. It's healthy, it's complete. And they think it's in agreement with. So there is only one sound and wholesome teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. That wholesome teaching is that sin DNA and death nature in all forms have been destroyed in the one singular act of the resurrection of Christ. That's why I said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, about this soundness, knowing that the explanation of the gospel that Jesus laid down is complete, is adequate, is finished, it satisfies all, it does not need any help. That is why he said again to Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 3 to 4. He continues, for the time is coming when people will not tolerate, endure. Look at the word is endure. They will not have stamina for it. They might listen to it for one year. Then they'll say, you know, I want to listen to something else. I want to listen to something else. Uh, it cannot only be epignosis, the accurate word of God, that is the Bible. Let me listen to something else. They don't have the endurance, their, their capacity to be, to be controlled, their capacity to be disciplined, to listen and be satisfied with the same thing is born out of logic. Why? Because in the world system, you know, uh, artificial intelligence has come, automation has come, Microsoft has come, science is developing, it's evolving. So they think that that is the same way the word of God should be. That is what they think. He said, for a time is coming when people will not tolerate, look at the word again, sound and wholesome. Anytime you see the word sound and wholesome, he is referring to the explanation style that Jesus laid down in telling us what is the content of the Bible and the context of the Bible. What is the content? It refers to me, the sufferings that I'll suffer for sin and the glory that I've dealt with sin. What is the context that sin and death DNA, they have been destroyed and removed once for all. It is healthy. Why? Because in that solves all problems of the spirit, the soul, and the body. But when you don't know that, you think that it is not enough for the spirit, the soul, and the body. So you think that it's only enough for some things, but not all things. So he said, they will not tolerate it. They will not tolerate or endure sound and wholesome instruction. Why? But have itching ears or ears that are itching. That is a very key word that I need to underline. Itching ears. Itching ears. Huh? Itching ears. Or killed ears. It's a, it's a figure of speech. It's an idiomatic expression. The Greek word for that is netomenoi. Netomenoi. It means to scratch. It means to itch for something pleasing, for something gratifying. You see that? Have you noticed that the something pleasing and gratifying has to do with man's desires, not what God has laid down? You know? Why? It means that it is self about terms of you are looking at 
it, you are looking at the meaning of the Bible from your self-centered approach, see that, not what has been laid down. So what is your self-service? The unbelievers have been successful in business, you know? So why should it only about Christ died, Christ was buried? Can we teach a little bit about, you know, a little bit about Sigma? Can we teach, can we do some workshop and teach about property? It is the person's own work. This person is filled with more of the wealth system. This person is concerned more of the wealth system. They, they, they have lent themselves to the world. They have lent themselves to the world. They have lent themselves to the world, the wealth system. They have given themselves to reading things of the world and they want to change it for it to come. Recording in progress. For it to come. That is what they are doing. They are comparing the world system, the world system as in line with the word of God. So they are looking at their desires. They are reading too much. They are reading more of economics, listening more to the news, things around the world, and so little in the world. So when they read the things of it, they say, oh, you know what? Why don't we do what the world is doing so that we too we can be successful? Not knowing that in Christ you're already successful. So they, 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 are, they want itching ears. They want for something pleasing and gratifying now satisfaction see that they'll make that they'll make their recommendation not based on what is written but what is popular in the world oh oh can we not preach a little bit about can we not preach a little bit so indirectly what we are preaching is not enough it's not adequate they still don't see it that way they can't they can't they cannot compute it's not in sync with the understanding See that? that is what it means by they will not endure this wholesome explanation that what Jesus did is complete, is enough, is adequate. But because they don't stay with their epistles enough, they still can't see the adequacy of the finished work of Christ. And so it robs them of the authority, it robs them of their boldness, it robs them. Now they begin to introduce fleshly systems of how the gospel ought to be preached. Friends, brothers, this is very dangerous. So when he says that they will not endure this wholesome teaching, that what Jesus has done is whole, is complete, is enough, is adequate. But they have itching ears. No, I don't think, I don't think listening about believers' authority is enough. Mm, no, 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 no. Uh, how can you just be saying that, you know, that there is no generational curse? How can you be saying, you know, uh, 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 you know, then we use all words and it is found in our songs wrongly. It is found in certain statements, you know, like statement like I tap into this person's anointing. It's not palm wine. It's not palm wine. Paul never talked about tap into. What we all have is the same. So it feels good for your personal satisfaction, but not according to what has already been laid down. That is why he said that, you know, rebuke such people. They are ambitious. They are not allowing themselves to follow. They are not submitting. They are not humble to what Jesus has laid down. He said, and these people, what will they do? They will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to what? satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold. Please take note, the errors they hold is because it is away from the laid down style of explanation. What is the style of explanation? That there was one main promise, Christ will come and die for man. And there was one main problem, 
the DNA of the sin of Adam and also the sin and the DNA of death. Out of the sin of Adam, DNA and death came all negative issues of the spirit, the soul, the body, and our planet. So the, the resurrection of Christ solves that issue. And when they will not enjoy it, look at what happened to them in verse 4, and will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off. They will wander off into myths and man-made fictions. Then the, this such an example of people uh, who have itching ears is found in Acts chapter 17, verse 18 to 21. For example, they'll come and listen, and we've seen examples here. We've seen examples here. They come in, they come and hear, they come and hear the accurate word of God, but then they are not consistent because they don't, they've not been brought up like that. They are filled more with the systems of the world. So after a while, they say, no, we cannot be listening only to this. Then they sneak away. Then they start listening to other people who do what? Who tickle their fancy. They want to hear only about success. They want to hear only about how to have properties. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that is not the gospel. That is not the gospel. The gospel is in a class of its own. It's not against those things, but it is not the gospel. Those things are not the gospel. The gospel is a one-stop solution to all of man's you know, spirit, soul, body issues. One-stop solution. So when you move away from the gospel in its correct explanation, it creates the impression that what we have in Christ is not enough. So I need sigma... I need sigma, I need sigma, sigma axioms. I need, I need fires to management. That is for man-made industry, not the gospel. The gospel is complete. An example of people who have itching ears, which weakens our authority, is found in Acts 17, 18, 21. This is about Paul and some also of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. Who are they? Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. They have read wild books outside Genesis to Malachi. They encountered him, who? Paul, and began to engage in discussion. And some said, what is this babbler? Huh? They call Paul a babbler. With this, look at what they call Paul, a babbler. With this scrap heap learning, scrap. They call the gospel scrap heap. Hey, scrap heap. Huh? In other words, the gospel is rubbish. And that is how some people come. You know, we cannot, we can, you know, the church needs to be empowered. We cannot be sitting here talking about Christ died, Christ resurrected, while the unbelievers are teaching people. You know, are teaching people entrepreneurship. We must empower the church. <laughs> they themselves, they have not come to know that the gospel is sound, Hugaino, is complete. They have not come to that. So in that, they inject that to other people. Who too have not come to that? Look at what they call it. He said, Paul is teaching what? He's called a babbler. That means he's talking nonsense with his scrap heap learning. Trying to, trying to say. Others said about Paul, uh, he seems to be an announcer of foreign deities. Why did they say that? Because he, Paul, preached Jesus and the resurrection. So Jesus in the resurrection as complete sounded foreign to their ears. How can Jesus and the resurrection put food on my table? You are carnal. How can Jesus and the resurrection help me to buy cars? Look at where your thinking is. We cannot, you see, we cannot be teaching only this. We cannot be teaching only this. We must teach others about, about, about property. We must teach them about this. You know, look at the same thing. See that? Just because he preached Jesus and the resurrection, look at where Paul stayed. As an emphasis, they said he's a babbler. They said that it's scrap heap teaching. And they took hold of him, Paul, and brought him to the Areopagus, which is the high court. 
has healed me simply saying, may we know what this, look at the word they use, this novel. <laughs> it sounded new to them. This unheard of and unprecedented what? 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 Teaching is which you are openly declaring. That means the order of the day in that city of Athens was all about philosophy, like in our day today, it's about artificial intelligence, internet, all the new things about business and management and entrepreneurship, you know. So I'm sure some other church assemblies, it has entered and we're teaching those things. But Paul stuck to his guns. And because Paul decided to stick with his guns and be distinct, they said he's a babbler. And that's what they'll call you and they'll call me. How can you come and sit here? So are you saying that all other churches, they are wrong? You see? You see that thinking? Eh? So what all, all other people are doing, they are wrong. You see, you see the level of carnality? You see the level of carnality? You see the level of carnality? Oh, so all of them, they are wrong. That is your position. It's your position because you are thinking like that. You don't understand that this is not man-made. Look at what they said. For you, Paul, you set forth some startling things, uh, foreign and strange to our ears. So tickling, having tickling ears uh, 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 is to think that the gospel is foreign. It's, why is it foreign? The word foreign or strange means xenos. It's outside the normal way. What is the normal way? The normal way is that, you know, we might be teaching about management. We might be teaching about artificial intelligence. We might be what goes on in man-made structures or schools of learning. You don't know that the Bible is called Hagios Grammar. You see, holy scriptures, writings that stand alone outside all this body of learning. It's in a class of its own. Even though you might find a bit of geography in it, it's not about geography. Even though you might find a bit of marriage in it, it's not about marriage. Even though you might find a bit about business in it, it's not about business. That is the correction there. It's not about that. It is a one-stop stop solution to the problem of the spirit, the soul of man. So once a person knows it well, it solves all that and brings stability your spirit, your soul, and the body. Not knowing that will not bring that stability. So it is startling. That's why people come here and they say, eh, 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 eh. what is Pastor Fred saying? I am not saying, I am mirroring what is there. Why? Because for years, you have been used to this ear tickle. Where all the churches we came from, they never taught in series. Today, they'll come and talk about this. David and Goliath. Tomorrow, Zacchaeus. Tomorrow, this. One program. Eight men of God will line up, all different, different, different. Different, different. So that has created an impression to you that the word of God can be, can be taught in different spectrum. There is, no, there is no symmetry. That is why you will struggle with this. And that's why many are still struggling with this. Because their mind is that the Bible can be talking about only one thing. He said that Lord. So they said he's bringing startling things foreign and strange to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, just what these things mean. Look at verse 21. Very typical of our 19th, 20, 21st century lifestyle. For the Athenians, the word Athenian is from the word Athens. Athens is the capital of Greece. It was a place of a lot of learning, like today. We pride ourselves in you know, somebody who is, who is very, very erudite. You know, that's what we like in our time. Yeah, hey, hey, wow, this guy, wow. He's, he's, a, he's a guru, guru, guru in management. Hey. For the Athenians, all of us, and visitors among them, look at what they did in red. Look at what they did. Spent all their leisure time, nothing, except... Telling uh, or hearing something newer than the last. This is what has conditioned many Christians. So you cannot be 
speaking every time Christ died, Christ Christmas, finish work, finish work. No, 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 no. Why? Because in our world, we spend our time scouring the internet, reading books that seem to purport a new idea, a new concept, a new fangled notion, <laughs> a new approach. Huh? Isn't, isn't that where, where we live? It is okay like that for the world, though. That is fine for the world, but not the gospel. The moment you come to the gospel, you must dissociate your mind from such a thinking. You must bring yourself to know that the gospel is one, and it's not about the way you feel. How you feel, what you think has no bearing on it. It has been sorted out already. So I bring myself to submit to the way it has been sorted out already. My feelings will heal. My mind will fight it. But you have to bring yourself, calm down, calm down and learn that it is only one explanation, one way, one mood, one model. Train your mind to accept that. It will help you. Anytime your mind begins to go, and you go and listen to somebody on YouTube, no, 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 no. The gospel is not about that. Then that thing will happen. See, they spent all their leisure time in nothing except telling or hearing something newer than last. Itching ears. Itching ears. So that's why some will not come here. Why? Because it's, the, it's basically re-echoing what is already there. They want to come and hear things, things every day, different things. God is about to. God is about to. God is about to. Yes. I saw six camels, eight dromedaries, four humpbacks, ten rhinoceros standing behind your hand. We pickle our fancy wife. Well, that's how the world, the world must dazzle. That is why iPhone cannot be static. iPhone 1, iPhone 2, iPhone 10. I, uh -huh. That is how the world is. Because the world must take care of our fancy. They spent all their leisure time looking for something new than the last. So it's not static. That's what we think. We are looking for something new. So when they come, and what is he talking about? Christ, Christ, oh, bam, they go. What is he talking about? Jesus has done it. Oh, boom. Uh, who told you that Jesus has done it? Uh, uh. And what is he talking about? He's like, oh. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Itching ears, not satisfied with what has been done. Yeah. Hey, but the man, the way he's talking, you know, he's so got some wisdom in it. Itching ears. Meanwhile, the witness you have, you know, it's not the truth, but it doesn't matter. Actually, it's not the same. Itching ears. And you don't know that it steals from you. Therefore, the thinking that all that we have already in Christ in terms of our authority and positions, that is what I want to emphasize. That thinking, uh, it worried me for so many years. That's what always the enemy and this wrong teaching does. It always tries to find a way to make it look like what we have in Christ, our authority and our position in Christ, they are not enough. That position Sin is eating ears is a sign of lack of spiritual good. Even if you have heard it 20 million times, never get to the place and say, Yeah, I've, I've, heard, I've heard that. You know, so they went, they hear that. What is he talking about? Christ and him crucified. Oh, I know that already. I know that already. Then they close their mind. Uh, what is he talking about? Uh, he's talking about the fact that you know we are superior to, to demons. Oh, I know, I know that already. I, I know that already. Mm, I, I know that. I, know. I, want, I want something. I want something. I want some, something deeper. What is the deeper? There's nothing deeper than the resurrection of Christ. The one, what you are talking about, you want to be dazzled. You want to be dazzled. You want to be tickled. See? What, what does a tickle do? A tickle makes you feel good. When somebody tickles, somebody, <laughs> yes, tickle. So they want to hear something. Mm, 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 deep, deep. Mm, mm, rema, rema. Mm, 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 mm. No, <laughs> it is shallow. So that notion that what we have in Christ is not enough, but I need to hear something else. 
persists because the believer has not had a solid grasp of the facts of the finished work of Christ. That one, I cannot overemphasize it. You think you know, but you have not read it enough. The facts of the apostles that they wrote in the epistles, all of it, if you look, 90% of all the writing, I repeat, 90% of all the writings of the word of God tells us what we have in Christ as superior. Only a tiny percentage gave something a bit about Satan. He told us how to deal with him. So why did God allow the apostles to repeat this consistently if it is not important? Because you read it, you think you have gotten it. You've not. But if you and I have gotten it, oh my goodness me. If we have really understood it and applied it as a lifestyle. No, we have not. We think we have, we haven't. Because we have not got a solid grasp. I'm not talking about mental accent too. You know what is mental accent? I agree with my mind, but I don't practice it. I know it in principle, but I don't practice it. The believer does not lack for power. The believer does not lack for faith or anything of the spirit. We just have to constantly bring ourselves to be satisfied with what Christ has finished in the written word. That's why the study of the word must be consistent until our persuasion is rock solid. So we are not told. So after coming to hear something like this, then go and listen to another man who will tell you, no, no, you know, even though, you know, Christ has died, you know, but be careful, you know, your sins will find you out. Uh -huh. Then you are confused. Then you are sitting there. You are confused. Uh -huh. You know, even though, it, look, let me tell you then, even I even had, yesterday I had somebody who said that, you know, he had a, it was a lady who had a vision or something, something about the return of Christ. And he saw many believers in hell. <laughs> look, look at, look at, even your, you look at the language you're using, believers in hell. Aren't you even ashamed even to use that, those two words, believers? They have believed on Christ too. See, that was a pack of lies. These are people who are devoid of the truth, who want to find a way to sound relevant. And sometimes we listen to this when we are sitting there, sitting there, and in Bible, thinking it will not do anything to us. We just have to constantly bring ourselves to be satisfied with what Christ has finished in the written word. That's, the, that's why it's the same. That's why it's not changing, then they'll stop. Some will be convinced, then they'll give up. You see that? That's why it's like they will not endure all the way through. Only few can do that. They believe it for a while. Then one day, somehow, somehow, the devil just tricks them to scour on the internet and they fall on us, another person. And the person sounds. It sounds right. Then they are listening to two different things. See that? Then their persuasion is maroon. So we have to stay. That's why the words have not changed. Ephesians is the same. Colossians, since it was written, the same. One Corinthians, the same. Two Corinthians, the same. Hebrews, the same. Books, have, other books have been written. Different books on biology, on chemistry, on physics, on management, on psychology, on architecture. They keep on changing it, changing it, and updating. The word remains the same for all seasons. You see now? Why? Because there's a learning curve. There's a learning journey. God knows man. God knows man. God knows man. Because not everybody will be able to commit themselves to be consistent in it. And because you are not consistent, then you forget. You forget. That's why I say that, what? Forget not his benefits. Man easily forgets. Sometimes we even forget the Bible for about one month. And we have forgotten all the facts. Then when Satan strikes, then you think that mm, what you seen of understanding was weakened. So that's why we've got to be on the ball until our persuasion is rock solid. Titus chapter one. Look at the advice he gave. He, Paul gave Titus. For the bishop, the word bishop does not mean the one that is wearing the long hat. It just means anybody in lead, leadership or authority in the church. 
that actually is, you know, to teach the word of God. See that? For the bishop, because you explained, for the bishop and overseer as God's steward, anybody preaching the gospel, especially in the fivefold ministry, is a bishop, overseer. So it's not the one today that they do ceremony. That's man made. That came out of the Catholic Church. Must be blameless. Watch. Watch. How? Not self will. See that? Your teaching style should not come out of what? Ambition. I feel we are preaching just too much of epignosis. Epignosis. Can't we teach a little bit about how to make how to make more money? Or how to make jollof rice? Self-willed. You are thinking that what Jesus wrote and what he brought and taught them is two one way. So Jesus, for once, you are wrong. I am right. Self-willed. And that means you are arrogant or presumptuous. You presume. Huh? Because you have not read it enough to be persuaded that it is adequate. You see, the more you read it, this persuasion is strong. The more you study the epistles and the, uh, and, the, and, the, and, and the scriptures, your persuasion is stronger. You become overly calm. That's why you see me preaching with passion because I've read it over and over and I still do. And I've come to conclude that it is enough. It is adequate. There is nothing superior to it. I don't need anything else. What Jesus did is far matchlessly and equivocally okay for all seasons. But there was a time I didn't know that, you see. So I don't need handkerchief. I don't need oil. I don't need bottle. I don't need water. The Jesus in me is sufficient always. But when you don't know that, you become self-willed, arrogant, presumption that, mm, no, 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 no. How can we be teaching Jesus died all the time? No, can't we teach a little bit, you know, can't we teach about the seven mysteries of the heavens? Can't we teach a little, a little bit, a bit? He said that the, the teacher of the word, the, the minister of the gospel, he must hold fast to the sure, look at, look at words, look at words, look at words. One, sure and trustworthy. Hey, hey, hey. Have you got to that place that you know that the lay down style of Jesus dealing with sin is sure and trustworthy. Have you come to convince that the realities in Christ, they are sure and trustworthy? Huh? They are trustworthy word of God as he was taught. How, were, how was Timothy and, and, and Titus, how were they taught? That it always referred to one man promise Christ, one man problem sin. The sin brought all the negatives and the miseries and the resurrection of Christ solved it all. But you must come to personal terms with that. See that now? As he was taught, did that scalo, so that you may be able to both, to both to give stimulating instruction and encouragement. Look at the same word that's popped up again huh? in sound wholesome doctrine. Ugainu. What Jesus did is sound. What Jesus did is wholesome. What Jesus did is complete. But you will never know that until you lend yourself to it as a lifestyle. You cannot be, you know, sort of dipping in and out. You know, you can't, you, you won't see it if you do that. You will not see it. You need to be ruthless. Because 24-7, internet is not asleep bombarding us. The, the, the you know, uh, cable televisions. Is bombarding us 24-7. Then you only just take the facts of the epistles, only a drop. Bim! How can bim, one tiny drop of reading only Ephesians once a week huh, let you see against the bombardment of news, internet, Wikipedia, all these things? No, it, it, that's, why, that's why you're not able to see it that way. So that what sound and wholesome doctrine. Huh? Now look at the next instruction carefully. Here, here. Look at it. Look at look. I'll, I'll, I'll change the color. Uh -huh. He said that as a preacher of the gospel, huh, 
your aim is to make people see that the word is sound. When he says sound, wholesome, hugaino, what is he referring to? Explanation style. Because when you move away from that explanation, it will create the impression that it's not complete. This is what is happening in many churches. I've been around a lot. So this, this dude has been around. I've been around many churches. Had many preaching. So I am not talking from my head. Sometimes after a person preaches something, you don't even know what, you don't even get the head and tail of what the person is saying. And always they're either insinuating that complete, indirectly, or there's more for us to do indirectly. Or Satan, Satan, you know, Satan is some force to contend with. You no, know, oh, it's either one of these positions. Either it is you can lose your salvation indirectly. Huh? We are not complete indirectly. Huh? We have not finished indirectly. Huh? You, you have to do something before God lose something indirectly. You see that now? Or Satan is still a force to reckon with indirectly. You see, always, if you think I'm lying, you take your time and take a pen and paper. Wherever they invite you to go, watch it. You watch it and see. It is either along these lines. We have not finished, though. Hey, we are not finished, though. There's still more to do, oh. You have to do this before God accept you, oh. No, you have to now, you have to use effort, uh, bring this and God will do this. All that, that see that is a way, but that's not how Jesus taught it. And that is what the apostles also mirrored. So why are we doing it differently? Because we have not read it well. Like I didn't used to read it well in the past. He said, so to do that, you have to what? Bring encouragement to sound explanation. Please, the sound explanation is not your explanation. It's not my explanation. It's the explanation patterned after the way Jesus said we should explain in Luke 24. That's what is called sound. And to refute and convict those who contradict and oppose it. We have to refute them, convict them, because they contradict and oppose it, showing what? The wayward, uh, showing that they are wayward in their error. You know, they say, hey, yo, Pastor Fred, you see, you preach your own. Don't, don't, don't say that people are wrong. You don't understand the gospel. You are, you are far from the truth. No, don't say that other people are wrong. Don't say it, you see. Don't say that they are wrong. Did you see how Paul was ruthless? One Timothy, two Timothy, Titus. That was the only warning. And advice he gave to them, you got to be ruthless. Refute. Huh? If they drop a wrong message on your inbox, don't let them go free. Huh? How can you allow somebody who doesn't know what you know come and drop? You can lose your salvation. Then you, are, you allow you. Oh no, no, we should not be. You see, we should not be confrontational. You see, you see, you see, we should all walk in love. <laughs> Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You were weakling. We should walk in love. So you leave it, leave it. Who told you that? No, 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 no. Because if that lie stays with them, that's why you know the truth. You know the light. He didn't say insult them. He said convict them. So we are not insulted. So now you two, you write your piece exegetically. Oh, my brother, my sister, thank you very much for what you have said. But however, there's something here which you have failed to see. According to them, you start bringing exegesis. The believer cannot lose their salvation because first of all, salvation is a nature because sin is a nature. Then you go to Romans 5, 12. Then you start. Then you come to a conclusion. He will come again. Then the person will see that. The person will say, oh, yeah, okay, I see what you see. But me, I don't want any argument. No. Follow them. Did you understand? Send another message. Did you understand what I said? So what, what is your, what, what, how do you understand it? A uh, believer can lose their but why, why did the Bible say that? Not always say, Lord, Lord. Oh, thank you very much for bringing that verse. Can we look at that verse in context? You are only using that a part of it. Well, in context, that verse was talking to false prophets. And at that time, Jesus had not yet died. You, that's what he's talking about. Refute and convict. Oppose. Because they are in error. For there are many disorderly and unruly men who are idle, vain, empty, and misleading talkers, and self-deceivers, and deceivers of others. This is true, especially of those who are of the circumcision party. 
who have come over from Judaism. So there are a lot of people, they, are, they think that Judaism, the, the Old Testament, they don't understand how it is used. Look at what Paul said, titled, their mouths must be stopped in the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus that if you were, so you are going to have, you need to reply, lie. Those words were written to Israel. There were 613 of them. Besides, nobody was born again. They must be stopped. They must be stopped. They must be stopped. That's why he's saying. They must be stopped. Huh? Why? For they are mentally distressing and settling and subverting whole families by teaching what they ought not to teach. Look at that. For the purpose of getting base advantage and disreputable gain. Then they, he gave an example. One of their very own uh, in, the, in, the place where, in the place where Titus was, a prophet of their own said, Cretans are always liars. So that means among the Cretans, Crete, they come from Crete. It's an island. This is what was going on among the Christians there. Huh? Liars, hateful beasts, idle and lazy glutons. And this account of them is really true. Why? Because it is true. Look at what Paul said. Rebuke them. Sharply. Deal sternly. Uh -uh. And even severely with them. Why? So that they may be, that's the word again, sound gugaino in the faith. He did not say insult them. He did not say be disrespectful for, to them. He said deal standing. The word standing means that stand your position because you know the truth. They are saying you can lose your salvation. You say, no, you can't lose it. Never. How? Then you take them back to beginning at Moses. Then give an example of Abraham and, and, and Noah and give an example of, of them. Show them. Stand. Uh, so that they may be corrected in the faith and free from error. Where is the error? They don't know the teaching style of Jesus. Beginning at Moses, that the emphasis of the content is about my suffering and my glory, and that the context is that sin has been dealt with. So they, they lose sight of these two facts, and they just cherry pick Bible verses. So you know better, he said, rebuke them. The word rebuke is not, the word rebuke doesn't mean shout. It means correct. How do you correct? By accurate teaching. So they drop it in your inbox. You, you take your time. You release it exegetically. You see that now? And no rash, no sentiment. You, you write nicely. Then you thank them for it. Then say, please, is there any other question? When they read it, because it is chronologically explained, they have nothing else to say. The only negative result that will come about is that, except they are stubborn in their mind, they'll say, I want to accept it. So then you go and say, oh, is that true? Let me give you some more examples. Huh? That's how you do it. So they'll be free from error. And you may show their soundness. That's the word. So have you seen today the word sound, 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 sound doctrine, sound, and your sound, who guy you know? The correct way is sound already. Eh? Look at it. To give season to give attention to what? Jewish myths. What is a Jewish myth? It's like in today our what? Uh, superstition. Genesis like Genesis. It's a Jewish myth. Yes. Because they were not born again, so they thought so. And the altar of Gideon, altar versus altar. Jewish myth. It's a superstitious belief. Mommy water. Superstitious belief. Spirit wife, spirit husband, Jewish myth, superstitious belief. It's not a word. There's no, there's no word for that. Eh? You see that now? Or to rules, how did that come about? Laid down by mere men who reject and turn their backs on the truth. So the arch enemy of God and man is death because out of death, brought all the miseries of the following. Our approach and relationship with God was, were destroyed because of death. Our spirit DNA was destroyed because of the death of the sin of Adam. Our mind soundness was destroyed. Our body control and appetites were destroyed. Our planets and universe constitution was destroyed. Therefore, out of death came all the miseries of man, spirit, soul, Body and planet wise, 
Therefore, after the fall of man in Adam, man can try to fix these issues themselves. So some of man's interventions, they work a bit. We can see it in architecture and all that, but they do not deal with the root cause because death and sin DNA are at the root of it. That is why the model of teaching for the church is to constantly follow the Jesus style and giving to the apostles, proving from the word that sin DNA and death DNA has been destroyed by Christ. To teach otherwise outside this model and emphasis means your explanation is wrong. Why? It weakens our sense of righteousness. It weakens our sense of authority and it weakens our soundness who you know in Christ. That is why Paul was stern and Jesus was stern. They didn't go by feelings. Even when the person you are talking to does not understand and it's angry, don't mind them. After a while, they will cool down. Don't let their anger and their te te temper tantrums let you weaken and say, oh, you know, the way he's behaving, okay, let me agree with him and say, okay, yes, you can lose your salvation. No, 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 no. They will cool down. Give them space. Afterwards, send another message. My dear brother, my dear, you remember the other time we were talking about, I want you to know that emphatically, you cannot lose your salvation. Here are a few Bible verses. Have a look at them. Uh -huh. They will cool down. And that is how, if we do anything Outside this model. That's why in our churches, many believers are weak. They are weak. Many, they don't know they are left from their right because their emphasis has been sense of righteousness, weakening their sense of authority and soundness in Christ. I'll continue tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.